morning to one and all. I am Amala Babu Thomas from Abu Dhabi. I'm a high school student currently studying at St. Xavier's College in Mumbai. First of all, let us begin our session with a silent prayer. First of all, I would like to cordially welcome the office bearers of All India Association of Sports for All, especially the president, Mr. A. Sarafji, who is a former cyclist and international roller skater. He is the former secretary <laughs> of Stark Cycling Federation, former convener and chairman, Technical Committee Cycling Federation of India. And he is presently working as the additional commissioner of state goods and services tax department of Kerala state in India. Above all, he is discharging his honorary services as UCI international commissaire and Tafisa CLC leader for the sports fraternity of the world, especially for India. Thank you, sir. Further, it's my great pleasure to invite Mr. Sudhir Kumar Sharmaji, who is the founder, general secretary of AIASFA and retired additional commissioner of Indian Revenue Service. Finally, on behalf of AIASFA, I would like to welcome all of you to the third edition of our international webinar series on pandemic lessons Sports as the Way of Life. The third international webinar series is being organized by the All India Association of Sports for All, AIASFA. It is an honorary association affiliated with the Association for International Sports for All, TAFISA, and Asiana Sport for All, ASFA. AIASFA is the umbrella organization and electoral right body on behalf of India since 2001. Its aim is to keep alive traditional games, prime sports development and better physical activities at all levels in the country. Mr. Sudhir Kumar Sharmaji is the founder general secretary of AIASFA on behalf of the organization, may I take this opportunity to extend a hearty welcome to you, sir. I would also request you, sir, to deliver the welcome note. Thank you, Ms. Amla. Dear esteemed guests, speakers, sport lover, friends, ladies and gentlemen around the globe, Caesar's greetings, Namaskar, Namaste from India, Due to time zone, some there may be some evening, some night, or some day, good, good afternoon, etc. So, Namaskar, some zeta. Sasrekalji to our Sasrekalji to our Dato, Sarji Sidji also. First of all, I would like to invite our president, Mr. Abu Baker Sarafji, on behalf of our association for the third edition of International Webinar Pandemic Lessons Sports as Way of Life. Mr. Saraf, is a dedicated sports lover, administrator, and moving spirit behind the series of webinars, coupled with his government duties as additional commissioner of GST in Kerala. Friends, I am delighted to have this opportunity to welcome you all on behalf of All India Association of Sports for All to this webinar series three. Especially our uh, professor, Dr. Marthanda Pillai, who is inaugurating this webinar. Mr. Pillai is the past national president of Indian Medical Association, chairman and managing director, Global Institute of Public Health and Anthapuri Hospitals and Research Institute, Trivendran. He is a Padma Shri awardee by Government of India. He was awarded in the year 2011. The other dignitaries on the dais and who are our speakers are Sri Hayono Isman from Indonesia. He is chairman of FORMI, Indonesian Sports for All Federation, 
and he is a former minister of youth youth and sports in indonesia and a former member of parliament as well our another guest is christopher samuda president jamaica olympic association and jamaica paralympic association welcome you sir thank you so much miss maria luisa de suja dias from brazil is the manager physical and sports development SC SCSP and former vice president international sport and culture association welcome miss maria thank you our uh, shri stanley butoya chief executive officer of african union sports council region 5 of gabon botswana is a, a, another speaker welcome you sir thank you thank you very much shri mike mckenny haslam founder president of international dragon boat dragon boat federation from uk is our another guest speaker i welcome you sir shri midul lal from usa who is a senior sports analyst and international of international cricket council and first and second level coach of cricket from washington dc is also our guest speaker and we welcome you sir thank you dear friends by this time all of us have all of us have become acquainted with this pandemic and have acclimatized ourselves as to the ways how to tackle this social distancing use of masks have become new norms maintaining hygiene has maintaining hygiene has become more essential now initially it was thought that this pandemic may not last long but the recent studies have revealed that the pandemic is going to stay here for a long only the advent of medicines Thank which you. are in this various stages of trial and are in, around all the countries of the world till they come life is difficult only the advent of medicines will bring confidence to the suffering population to fight this pandemic mother nature has made the world realize as to who really owns the planet and who has the final command so mother nature has to be respected seriously in letter and in spirit the initial lockdowns world over have drastically affected economy business industry and sports as well as per recent ilo report almost 500 million jobs have been lost and labor income losses around the world amount to 3.3 trillion dollars as of now there are around 32 million cases in the world and nine uh, around 9 lakh 9 lakh people have perished recent fear of fear uh, in europe there are recent fear of reemergence of corona have emerged and it involves possibilities of further lockdowns this is a very critical stage we wish it ends soon sports is around us 800 million dollar in billion dollar industry and normally regarded as recession free but this corona virus has affected this also the pandemic has given a serious a severe blow not only to industry but a psychological blow to sportsmen players coaches and supporting staff affecting their income as well as health and marketing of sports has become very difficult in this time of financial difficulty to safeguard the health of athletes and other persons involved most of the major international tournaments like tokyo olympics uefa european league wimbledon have either been postponed or cancelled this is very terrible situation and all it is due to corona our rafisa sports for all games to first which were to be held in october in to in this board called portugal have also stands postponed sports play an impact important role in our lives particularly in difficult times sports and fitness enhances the immunity to fight diseases sports create passion and zeal in one's life to attain perfection and dedication and discipline whatever sport work place sports improve human excellence personality and it helps building character sports in builds a model for living well for a life with plenty of vitality sports connect people from various regions without discrimination as to caste color or creed 
and brings communities together by building social bridges. During this International Day of Sport for Development and Peace, the United Nations Assembly uh, encouraged people to be active during the quarantine and to foster solidarity, community and team spirit. We have to follow that spirit. The practice of physically active lifestyles is recommended to, count, to counteract health and mental consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. Who recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity for physical activity per week at a time when so many people are unable to participate in normal activities it is important to use the opportunity to consider the role of sports and physical activity in the midst of this global crisis being physically active helps keep us fit and healthy boosts our mood and helps our cognitive function and improves our immunity to fight the disease as we practice social distancing to help curb the spread of virus continuing to exercise in same in safe ways will be of utmost importance most of our active sports like cricket hockey soccer wrestling volleyball etc are suffering more due to maintaining proper social distancing and use of masks masks also restrict oxygen supply for if we use it prolonging if we prolong its use Nowadays, web-based training programs are in the offing. The global community has adopted rapidly by creating online content. And in this digital era, the COVID times have really proved the worth of digitalization. The capsules for stretching, meditation, yoga are in the offing, and which whole family or friends together can enjoy. As per our ancient culture and history, Indian sages used to perform yoga for salvation and as a fitness mantra which purifies both mind and body the whole world is now practicing this indian tradition for fitness and due to our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji's initiative you introduced international yoga day which is celebrated all over the world on 21st of june in these times in these trying times everyone should do yoga to remain fit healthy and to keep depressing tendencies away. Yoga is about bringing harmony between the body, breath, mind and soul. In India, our PM introduced, also introduced Fit India movement on 23rd September 2009 and we celebrated its anniversary few days back. It is a matter of immense pride to say that whole world has now started practicing yoga to maintain fitness and create healthy immunity. Hello India Firse is another program launched by our Union Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports, Shri Kiran Rijuju. He earnest, we earnestly hope that the old rhymes, old rhythms may come back soon. Let's pray for that, sooner the better it is. In present time of great change and global uncertainty, we are sometimes at a loss to find stability and peace within. Yet, we are supported endlessly by the wisdom of ages. Loka, Samastha, Sukhiro, Bhavanta is a mantra of power that assists us in our spiritual evolution and acts as a blessing for the entire world. Loka, Samastha, Sukhiro, Bhavanta is a Sanskrit mantra which literally means that the whole world be happy. We believe in that. Though through AISFA, our motto is to follow our mantra and to promote healthy and happy life of people, not only in India, but in the entire world. Through our series of webinars, we want to create awareness amongst people as to how to take care of sports and sport events in the COVID times. I again welcome our all guest speakers who have come from different corners of the world and who are the renowned experts in their field. I welcome them all to this international webinar series. I also take this opportunity to welcome and acknowledge the presence of Dr. Ramana Kumar, Management Group, and Dr. K. Chandra Shekhar, Management Expert, who are the guides of our worthy president, Mr. Saraf, for his PhD studies on sports management and empirical study on uh, comparative data approaches in India. 
lastly i may refresh your memory to celebrate world walking day on 4th of october which is a tafisa program for sports for all and walking is a basic simplest and it costs nothing so i exhort all of you to follow this tafisa program in letter and spirit thank you sir thank you thank you bismillah thank you sir uh, dear panelists as we are a bit behind on our time schedule i kindly request you to uh, limit your speeches uh, in 5 minutes uh, next professor dr a martanda pillai is the former national president of the indian medical association he is also a recipient of padma shri he is currently the managing director of anandapuri hospitals and research institute in trivandrum may i take this opportunity to extend a hearty welcome to you sir i would also request you sir to declare this third session of our international webinar series by ai asfa open and also to deliver the inaugural address thank you a very good morning to all of you back home today morning is very sunny and bright and let brightness come into the minds of every person and there there let there be motivation in this covid era and uh, i particularly thank the organizers for inviting me for the inaugural session because uh, we belong to different field of activity but still there are a lot of commonness between health and sports because uh, sports is an integral part of keeping good health so it is definitely sort of interconnected sports as i know is a big contributor for social and economic development of the community it is also a big contributor for empowerment of women youth even individuals and communities at large and uh, it definitely has a role in uh, education in health and our spheres so sports cannot be seen as a stand alone activity it is an integral part of the human development and uh, humanity cannot survive without physical activity and sports activity because that is what motivates a person who is little low whenever he is little low and uh, definitely the uh, this covid era definitely has uh, put a curtain on all the sports activities just like it has affected other areas of life and uh, if you look at uh, every aspect of life all are on lockdown and it more or less continues to be so even if uh, lockdown is not officially proclaimed every person is afraid to come out of their house and uh, but then uh, uh, the covid pandemic which is uh, the worst uh, pandemic you can think of in the history of mankind is still on the rise a flattening curve is not visible except in certain countries so it is a great challenge so every act of education health to some extent at least covid related activities are there economic activities shops agriculture whatever you think of every sphere of life is at a stand still and so to is sports and uh, if you look at sports the ecosystem of sports if you look at not only the athletes and players the tours and travel agents uh, the infrastructure and uh, all other areas broadcasting sport journalism and uh, finance and everybody it forms the sports ecosystem are all now mentally blocked and this has to go definitely the global value of sports is almost uh, uh, 765 billion us dollars and that definitely is a major player in our economy and that definitely we are losing not only the economic aspect of it but every other aspect of of life is uh, connected with sports and uh, when you talk of sports it's not the international league alone but down the line all physical activities 
even uh, individual physical activity at home has to be sort of stepped up. And uh, how best we can revive ourselves, keeping all the precautions to fight COVID and at the same time encourage activities has to be really thought of. When you say encourage activities, you have to have new norms. Because as we know, even the Olympics, in the modern history of sports and games, no Olympics have been postponed. And today we see that the Olympics to be conducted in the most advanced country, most technologically advanced country, they're not able to do it. So that is like really the impact. So we had to come out of this. And uh, sports has to again become a way of life and part of our life. So innovative things has come up. Uh, online uh, coaching is uh, already there. Apps are being produced, which will, it is uh, individually tailored so that every individual can use it. But then uh, this again has its own limitations because this will reach only, only a certain segment of the population. The people who are really deprived, who don't even have electricity, even don't have a broadband connection, these sort of facilities don't reach them. And it is this category uh, who has to be really looked after because sports means quite a lot to them because it is a way of life for them. It is what makes them take care of their education, use them job. And uh, that definitely is something which we cannot deny. How best we can come out of the situation? Uh, first and foremost, of course, sports organ organizations and uh, UN and WHO has to come closer and come out with statements to contain COVID. This is, this has already happening because the football league, along with the WHO, has come out with the slogan to kick out COVID virus. And similarly, many other organizations have to join hands with the WHO or local authorities and propagate uh, uh, the measures to pick out COVID. That's the only way we can sort of prevent it. And even with COVID, we have to start thinking of how best we can reactivate uh, the sports activities. Because it is very essential, even from health point of view, particularly people with so many comorbidities, if they are keeping ideal at home, they'll be more on the net, spending more time on the nest, no physical activities, eating junk food, and this is going to complicate their health. So even at individual level, this has to be taken care of and it has to be systematically sort of prevented, if not there will be a lot of problems. And the sports organization itself has to come up with uh, protocols for conducting each and every sports activity, even at the micro level, so that a confidence building happens with the sportsmen, athletes, and others, and also the public. Uh, some of the health-related points which have to be adopted, if I may say, one is, of course, crowding definitely cannot be there even in a stadium, even for an international league. And the usual way of getting that ticket or the pass to enter has to become biometric. That too, facial biometric has to be introduced. Hand washing, sanitation, mask wearing of the mask, and uh, physical distancing has to be strictly followed. And even uh, the traditional way of cricketers sort of uh, briefing in their changing room has to be stopped. At one time, more, not more than seven people should be in the changing room so that distance can be maintained. And uh, uh, ma shake, usual shaking hand and camaraderie, the way you show your camaraderie has to be stopped and Indian way of namaste has to be learned internationally so that without handshaking, the half camaraderie can be maintained. So these sort of uh, newer ways has to be thought of as uh, my previous uh, speaker said, uh, even we, we, uh, wearing a mask by athletes, even doing training, it adds on to the physiological burden on the person because oxygen availability can be affected. But then you have to have a compromise between wearing a mask and at the same time 
doing rigorous physical activity. Physical activity is again very much required even for developing immunity in you. Moderate level of physical activity level definitely increases your immunity, but very hard uh, activity may sometimes reduce your immunity at least for 24 or 72 hours, but conclusive evidence has not come in so far. Mental health, again, is a very important aspect uh, because uh, sports definitely induces everybody and uh, it entertains people. It keeps people's worry away. But sitting home without doing anything definitely is a stress and strain on a person, particularly when they find that uh, they are closed ones, have uh, died or there is an economic problem because of the lockdown and things like that. So the mental health definitely affects and even for that reason, activities, sports activities has to be definitely assumed. Another good aspect of, uh, medically speaking, aspect of uh, physical activity is that when you walk or do some exercise, definitely en endorphins in your body are produced and this gives a feeling of well-being to the person. So that itself, without any expenditure, uh, without drugs, you become much more active. So uh, what we have to really think of is how best we can restart governmental level activities, organization itself coming with protocols for this, and uh, uh, technology has to be harnessed so that newer ways of uh, of uh, sports can be thought of and all these are uh, the need of the hour and more than all these things uh, the sports personalities are so popular with uh, the public that they had to take the initiative to send the message to contain coronavirus by their tv talks or by uh, uh, facebook or whatever so that people listen and follow so that role definitely the sports personalities can definitely pay. And uh, sports is not just a way of life alone. It is part of life. And sports and physical activity is what keeps the mankind active, alive, and think ahead and forge ahead. So sports activity is a, not a standalone activity. It is an integral part of our life. And the, the earlier you start re rejuvenating it, better for us and for the humanity. And with these few words, and uh, also my appreciation for the association for inviting me, uh, I declare inaugurated the third webinar of uh, this great organization. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your very valuable talk. Respected panelists, uh, once again, requesting all of you to conclude your speeches in your given time. Thank you all. Uh, now we are moving on to the special address by Mr. Hayono Isman. Mr. Isman is the chairman, Indonesian Sports for All Federation, FORMI. He's also a former minister of youth and sports and a former member of the parliament. On behalf of the organization and all attendees, I extend a very warm welcome to you, sir. And I would request you to deliver the special address. Uh, thank you, Amala. Uh, my good friend, Mr. Sahar, the All India Sport for All Association, Mr. Sudhir Sharma, fellow speakers, fellow sports activists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to inform you at the moment, the COVID-19 in Indonesia is in the rise. We have more than 200,000 cases and more over 10,000 deaths and our economy is not so good. The Minister of Finance has informed the public that by next month we are into recession. Therefore, I would like to praise the All India Sport for All Association for this uh, timely webinar. 
where, where we will be discussing on how sport for all can face the difficult challenges of COVID-19 all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, yes, we learn a lot from COVID-19. As we know that in every catastrophe, behind that, there is always a blessing in disguise. What we learn from COVID-19, a very simple fact, that fit people is more likely successful to face the COVID-19 rather than the, the unfit people. That is why at this uh, webinar, we propose a fit society to face COVID-19. You, you can be healthy, but you are not necessarily fit. When you're fit, for sure, you are healthy. But to be fit, you have to be healthy first. That is why health and fit goes together hand in hand. At the moment, our government has spent hundreds million of dollars to pay people to go to hospital with heart disease, obese, diabetes. Yeah. So the portion of hundreds of millions of dollars every year provided by the government, mostly to pay for diseases that can be prevented. So we spend a lot of money doing curative rather than prevention and promotion. That is what happened in Indonesia. Therefore, we can say we are a healthy nation, but for a fit nation, there is something that we must strive on. That is why in our initiative plan, we have agreed to launch Indonesia FIT 2020-2045. Starting from this year, we have to work our very hard to create more sport activists. Indonesia need more sport activists. At the moment, we have athletes, yes. We support the elite sport towards the Olympic Games as the high, the high achievement that we must reach. But remember, at the moment, Indonesia need to have a healthy and fit society. Therefore, starting this 2020, we have informed the government that hand in hand, Indonesia need more sport activists. Out of 270 million Indonesia population, it's only a handful of 30, 40,000 sport activists. It's too small to create a fit society. That is why we have planned this Indonesia FIT 2020-2045. Hopefully, by 2045, where we commemorate our 100 years of independence, Indonesia as a nation can be proud to be one of a fit nation in the world. A fit person, a fit society, a fit nation can do a lot of things. Not just fighting against virus such as COVID, but we can increase productivity. 
we can strengthen our economy because we have a fit worker, professionals, government officials. Furthermore, at this difficult moment, Sport for All can serve to maintain a peaceful social relations. COVID is a crazy virus, you know that. Crazy virus create havoc in our economy and in our social relationship. People, families, they are getting stressed by this COVID. And Sport for All can deliver to ease this situation. Mr. Saraf, ladies and gentlemen, through this wonderful webinar, Indonesia hope that the sport of all movement of the world can join hand in hand together to fight viruses, to maintain a peaceful nation, to create a more peaceful world in the midst of fierce competition. Fierce competition creates stress for every nation in the world. But we cannot avoid that, can we? The only we do is how the sport for all movement can do something to ease this stress. Therefore, I would like to say in my closing statement that the sport for all is the best answer to solve our problem. Not just fighting against viruses or to save our economy, but to have a better world especially today in a fiercely competitive world that we are facing. Maybe we cannot avoid that, but surely we can do better with sport for all. Bot Danewat, terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For your informative address, especially on the highlighting the importance of a fit society in today's world. For the keynote address, we have with us Mr. Christopher Samuda from Jamaica. He is the president of the Jamaica Olympic Association and the Jamaica Para Olympic Association. On behalf of AIASFA and all the participants, may I take this wonderful opportunity to extend a very cordial welcome to you, sir. May I now request you, sir, to address the gathering. Thank you so much. I'm indebted to the All India Association of Sports for All, President Saraf and Vice President Singh of ASFAA for the privilege and opportunity they have given me in delivering the keynote address on the topic, Sports Challenges and Opportunities in Jamaica and the Caribbean islands during COVID pandemic. The experiences of which, my friends, may very well find commonality with other countries external to the Caribbean, except for some disparities arising from different levels of infrastructure development. The COVID-19 pandemic is a global reality, but the wisdom of the human intellect, will, and spirit teaches us that opportunities must be discovered and created to overcome them in enhancing the quality and the ethos of the lives we live in sport. So whereas we must heed and treat the pandemic, which has given rise to the reality of ill health and death in our efforts to minimize its impact, we must never let fear paralyze us into fatalistic indiscretion and inaction by not observing relevant health and safety protocols. Even in the midst of the tragedies of a pandemic, my friends, we must never, we must never negotiate with defeat. 
the challenges in sport which countries in the Caribbean are facing during COVID-19 and will also face post-COVID are not, as I said previously, exclusive to the region. There are challenges brought about by the economic fallout, which has adversely affected sport associations and federations with resultant administrative layoffs, cutbacks, and in some cases, job losses, with resultant cancellations or indefinite postponements of sporting initiatives and events, which would have generated revenue. And certainly there has been the resultant increase in difficulty in accessing sponsorship dollars owing to the decline in business and profitability of the sponsors. There are challenges owing to the disruption and cancellation of training regimes and competitions with the consequential loss of earnings for athletes, coaches, and managers. There also have been the emotional and psychological challenges for athletes, coaches, and managers alike in adjusting to the new normal, particularly when one's financial ability and domestic situation have been impaired to such an extent that they may not even allow self-preservation. There's also the challenge of an underdeveloped public health system and infrastructure, and the absence of sufficient equipment capability in managing the current outbreak and increase in the numbers of positive cases. And there will be challenges for those that have in the post-COVID environment in maintaining a relatively sterile environment. There are also challenges, my friend, arising from a feeling of apathy or indifference, in some, to the gravity and predicted longevity of the virus and the imperative of adhering to safety precautionary measures of wearing masks, social distancing, observing a multiplicity of intrusive hygiene methods and restrictions in movement. For them, they constitute an assault on their sense of liberty and constitutional rights of freedom of association and movement, or simply they are, it is felt, some nuisances in overcoming this pandemic. Then there is a challenge, my friends, of the ineffectiveness of the state apparatus in policing and enforcing sanctions for breaches of the health and safety stipulations and protests in their daily lives have to interface. And not, not to be forgotten, is an outright mistrust or distrust of scientific and medical findings that support adherence to stipulated health protocols in minimizing the spread of the virus, whether such dispositions are rooted in political posturing or simply personal beliefs. There are several challenges in the Caribbean, my friends, and they are not dissimilar to those in other countries, particularly those associated with the social and economic fallout that continue to impact the ability and efforts of governments and authorities in minimizing effectively the adverse impact of the pandemic and to fast track economic recovery. So, the advent of measures implemented early and an effective educational strategy that promotes the value and the imperative of personal safety, community awareness and activism, and civic responsibility. But my friends, as citizens of the world with passports of hope inspired by faith, while understanding and meeting the challenges of the pandemic, we, all of us in the global village, must deepen our resolve to unearth and exploit the opportunities that present themselves. There are during and indeed will be post-COVID immeasurable opportunities which we must seize in transforming the sporting landscape and the human environment as we collectively seek to redefine and start sport. In the face of the onslaught of the pandemic and in its aftermath, there is a lesson and an opportunity for the sport fraternity to understand, internalize and express the value of collective response. in insulation from risks arising from pandemics and natural disasters. There's also the lesson and an opportunity for sporting and entities to infuse 
in their or create organizational disaster plans that in a structured, time-sensitive, and cost-effective way are achieved and activated without bureaucratic delay and impractical deployment of human resources when pandemics and disasters occur. There is also the lesson and opportunity for sporting entities to collaborate in having shared services, which in small economies of the Caribbean with increasing operational costs would more achieve or maintain economies of scale when crises occurred. There's also, my friends, a lesson and opportunity for sporting organizations while global interests pursue a remedial vaccine to develop a strong functional support outfit of sports psychologists and other professional therapists in vaccinating, in a manner of speaking, their athletes and coaches against disorientation and depression in crises. For those professionals are not only critical to performance on the day of competition, but they are very instrumental in building the athletes and coaches the mental fortitude to deal with crises which force them out of training and competition. There's also the lesson and opportunity to optimize the use of virtual platforms and digital technology hitherto not exploited to inform, educate, and inculcate in members of the sporting fraternities cross borders and cross continents, the values in and the value of sport. We have a strategic opportunity now, my friends, in the midst of all of this pandemic, to ingrain in the world's psyche and consciousness, the values of courage, determination, inspiration, solidarity, humanism, and sustainability, which are founding principles of the Olympism and Paralympism. In these webinars, we must therefore challenge ourselves to be prognostic more than being diagnostic in treating the challenges. The All India Association of Sport for All has created opportunities for the global village to find solutions. We must therefore broaden and deepen the conversation on how sport as a social and recreational intervention can provide opportunities attitudinally and structurally in changing the landscape and delivering somewhat of a panacea to athletes, coaches, managers, and administrators, and generally civil society during the pandemic. We must, my friends, extract from the experiences of these times lessons that do not remain cloistered in textbooks and the digital files of our minds, but become viral in managing and attenuating the pandemic while building the social and economic capital for sport. In the Caribbean, where relatively small economies and the social infrastructure are susceptible to hurricanes and earthquakes, multilateral dialogue, which you, the All, England Association, All India Association of Sport for All, are generating in these webinars, will permit not only introspection, but vision as we collectively pursue the mission of sport as a way of life and living. For challenges, my friend, there will always be. But wise is a human man and the woman and a people who do not bury their heads in the sand, who look to the horizon and beyond for inspired thought and action. The global village must now rise against a common in so I'm addressing this webinar and I look forward to its continued success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your very valuable talk. Uh, respected panelists, as we are a bit behind on our time schedule, I request all of you to limit your speeches to the given uh, allotted time. Now we are moving on to the address by Mrs. Maria Lucia de Souza Diaz. Manager of Physical and Sports Development at SESC, State of Sao Paulo from Brazil. And she's also the Vice President of the International Sport and Cultural Association. On behalf of the organizers and all attendees, I extend a very warm welcome to you, Mary, to address the gathering. Thank you. I could I need to share my screen. Or we are. Yeah. 
Can you see? Can my screen? Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, good evening, good night <laughs> for you from different parts of the world. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to be with you here in this important uh, webinar. Um, I am from Brazil. I'm living in the city of Sao Paulo, a quite huge city. For the guests of Commons, SESC were created in 1946. We are a education, culture, our mission in the sports field is to promote, give access, and expand the practice of physical and sports activities for all. We believe that sports, physical activity, and leisure form a powerful base capable of positively impact people's physical and mental health. Furthermore, the self-care awareness and the motivation to lead an active life, as well as finding joy in the press, make sports and physical activity even more loaded with values, sense, and meanings. But the reality we are facing now is the COVID. with no doubt that being physically and mentally health help us face the spirit more safely. At the same time, over the past month, we have seen increase in the level of sedentary lifestyle to level never seen before. As As a result of seeing related with the physical inactivity, we also notice a significant boost in issues related to mental health, especially anxiety and depression. And uh, we need to keep in mind that according to the World Health Organization, early 3.2 million people die around the world as a result of issues related to sedentary lifestyle. We are talking about a sedentary pandemic as well. But I have to say that in this period, without the essence and, and mission of our work, we have to innovatively remote our actions to continue follow the aim to incentive an active life. Also, in our current scenario, more than ever, the individual affects the collective. For this reason, acting in a collective way can help us to overcome this immense challenge. Changing our habits, our behaviors and taking care of our health also means taking care of Other such as 
sports and leisure organizations, none of we have been done will be possible. These partner networks bring us opportunities to exchanging knowledge, enriching our activities and expand our connections around the world. In this sense, I would like to highlight webinars like this one we are taking part now that gathers experts from different parts of the world, strengthening this worldwide movement of sports, physical activity, and health for all. Also, We are sure their homes as a place for experience differences and their families, friends, and, co and companies as support network. We believe that's more than necessary to strengthen these different networks, partners, networks, uh, social networks, and support networks. Uh, last but not least, I would like to tell you that um, the campaign here in Latin America, where our organization leads, become virtual, virtually campaigns and gain special capacity to introduce and promote interaction through physical activity by reaching even more people and bringing more possibilities to advocate for the sports cause. So my final words lead me to a reflection related to our lives and in this moment. I can say that uh, at the end of the day, this pandemic moment brings a rupture, but even in an ocean of uh, uncertainties, one thing we know for sure, the solidarity and cooperation will help us to build a solid and promising future, which is very aligned with the quote that I saw this week from the UN. The pandemic has taught us that our choices matter as we look to the future, let us make sure yeah. we choose yeah. it wisely. No. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, ma'am, for your very valuable address, which highlighted the importance of both physical as well as mental health during this pandemic. Now we are moving on to the address by Mr. Mike McKiddy Haslam from the Great Britain. He's the founder and honorary president of the International Dragon Boat Federation. On behalf of the organizers and all the participants, may I take this opportunity to extend a very cordial welcome to you, sir. May I now request you, sir, to address the gathering. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning and, and uh, thank you to the All Indian Association Sport for All for the opportunity to talk for a few minutes um, about uh, not just my sport, but I guess the challenges that all team sports and individual sports are facing at the moment. Um, my own sport, Dragon Boats, uh, have been raced in southern China for over 2,200 years to mark the death of the famous warrior poet Chu Yan. But it's only since 1976 that Dragon Boat racing as a sport has spread around the world from Dragon Boat Festival races held annually in Hong Kong. Where sport for all is concerned, since the formation of the IDBF, the International Dragon Boat Federation, in 1991, modern dragon boat boating has truly come a sport for all, with races held for all ages, both male and female, and for the physically and mentally challenged within society. Over 8,000 participants were due to compete in the 2020 World Club Championships in France, which had to be cancelled due to COVID-19. The challenges faced by a sport for all, such as dragon boating, is the general commercialisation of sport. And this applies to all sports, where the major spectator sports and the Olympic sports tend to get the most media coverage and sponsorship, and national government agencies tend 
put taxpayers' money into supporting the Olympic sport to the exclusion of most other sports. To redress this balance in sports society, sport for all should be the aim of every sport. And the challenge is for governing bodies of sport at all levels to look at ways of enhancing their own sport by, for example, promoting other sports during their national and world championships and running joint events with other sports, as well as targeting, targeting new groups, such as cancer survivors. In dragon boat racing, one of my biggest areas of, of uh, competition uh, and participation is with breast cancer survivors. If we turn to COVID-19, to me, again, for all sport, not, not just to, for team sports, the question, to misquote Shakespeare, is to travel or not to travel. For whatever the outcome of COVID-19, the fact remains the virus was able to spread so quickly from China to the whole world because of mass air travel by the general population. The thought in particular, the question now is, will people be prepared to travel the world again, or even nationally, post-COVID-19 to take part in or attend sports events and championships? Will people want to go through the longer check-in <laughs> security procedures at airports? the possibility of enforced lockdown on arrival or even return to their home country. For team sports such as dragon boating, there is also the question of how do you socially distance and be, a, be an effective sport if keeping your distance is seen as a protection against disease? Will family pressures of not to go put you off the idea of travelling to a sporting event or to a meeting? The Tokyo Olympics will surely be a test to see if the world now thinks watching sport is a desirable thing to do, especially when you can watch the whole thing on TV from the comfort of your home. So this brings into question the new world order, communication and organisation. COVID-19 has also made us look at how we administer and organise our sports. At world and multi-sports level, individual participants in a sport do not directly have much say, if any, in the decisions made in their name. This traditional system of sports organisation is understandable, given the methods of travel and communication available in the past. But with the ever-increasing development and use of information technology, surely sport can now be organised in a better way and communicate between the elected representatives and those they are elected to serve can, in the process, be greatly enhanced and improved. Good communication throughout the period of, of the sport is the key to success. With COVID-19, we have seen the world turn to video meetings and electronic commu communication systems as ways of communicating without meeting face-to-face. -face. This webinar is a perfect example. The use of social media for personal communication through platforms like WhatsApp, WeChat, Zoom, Skype, YouTube, Facebook, etc., etc., have all been used extensively to keep the wheels of society turning. Governments and politicians around the globe are now using all these modern communication methods to communicate with their electorate. electorate. So why not sport? Business. Businesses replacing face-to-face -face meetings with video participation and electronic voting. So why not international sports federations? To use such organisational and communication methods in the future, especially in the international level, can save time and money by not travelling and help to protect the environment at the same time. COVID-19 has given us the opportunity to change the way we govern sport and communicate with it. With it. Let us, let us do it for the betterment of all sports. How do we cope with this, this new situation we find ourselves? Well, the good things that have come out of the bad, this bad experience is that we are communicating electronically with each other more often than directly. As a result, air pollution from cars, trains and planes has decreased dramatically. We have found that life, without the daily grind of travelling to work, is much less stressful. What enthusiasm and de desire will there be from people to take part in or indeed travel long distances to compete in sport, especially dragon boating, team sport, 
that puts 22 athletes in close proximity to each other in one boat, which the medical scientists tell us is the ideal way of spreading COVID-19. Competition is the area where we really do have to comply with every social distancing rule and any other restrictions that government may place on sports events. In dragon boating, as I'm sure in other sports, we have found ways of exercising and training through video groups, online presentations, social media, and discussions on Zoom and Skype, etc. Protocols have been developed to create crew bubbles for race for training, where after each training session, a picture is taken of the crew in the boat, showing where they are sitting in the boat, so in the event that one of those in the bubble contacts, contracts COVID-19, it will be easy to track and test those sitting around them in the boat. Now we've started to look at when we can return to racing. The move back to competition will vary from country to country, and this applies to any sport, depending on the COVID-19 situation. In the UK, for example, the British Dragon Boat Association put forward to the government the five-phase plan for the return to dragon boat racing, which has been accepted in full, with phase one coming into effect from October 2020. The plan includes comprehensive advice and guidelines to dragon boat clubs with a view to a full return to competition in the spring of 2021. Looking forward into 2021 and beyond, to cut down on the amount of travelling crews do, the sport may hold regular competitions, regionally based competitions, uh, and with national championships possibly taking place every two years and not annually as is the case now. <clears throat> competitions on dragon boat ergos, both physically and through video competitions, could also be introduced, as could dragon boat competitions through video links and Zoom type systems. Squash ladder type competitions over the season with grand, finish, grand finals at the end of the season, could be developed with water-based, water and wind conditions factored in. At international level, the an annual focus could be on continental championships, with the world championships every four years. Some sports already do this. Other sports may want to consider it. Such systems would, see, would keep both national and international travelling and participants' personal costs to a minimum to give more value to winning a medal. In closing, I will put it to you that there must be many ways of delivering meaningful and worthwhile types of sporting events and experiences. COVID-19 has forced us to work differently, live differently and think differently. Let us use this new world we find ourselves in for the betterment of sport for all. Thank you for your time and for listening. Thank you, sir, for your very informative address. Now we have an address by Mr. Stanley Mutoya from Zimbabwe. He's the CEO of African Union Sports Council Region 5, the Ministry of Youth Empowerment, Sports and Cultural Development, Botswana. Sir, on behalf of the organization and all the participants, I extend my hearty welcome to you and I request you to address this gathering. Thank you so much, the Director of Proceedings. Uh, my, uh, may I request that I share my, my screen? Yes. Um, so that I can share with my dear colleagues my yes, presentation sorry. this morning. I, I want to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for inviting me to be part of this very important webinar. And my special thanks to the President of uh, AI um, uh, All Indian Association for sport for all uh, and the rest of the movement. Thank you very much for your involving us. I'm not going to talk much more about what my friends have said uh, a lot in terms of the impact that we have experienced um, with the global pandemic that um, has come to our doorsteps. And as Africa, and particularly Southern Africa, we have not been spared either. The pandemic has taken us by surprise and our industry, which is sport, and particularly sport for all, has been the hardest hit industry because this is a, the lifestyle of our people um, is, is directly impacted. 
and the impact has been broad-based from a national, global, regional level, and also very specific from a country to country point of view. As the African Union Sports Council Region 5, we are responsible for 10 member countries in Southern Africa. And the impact of COVID-19 in all these 10 member countries has been at very various levels. For, for some of you who have been following the news from Africa, you will realize that within Southern Africa, South Africa has been the hardest hit country, uh, which is also one of our global epicenters in, in the region. And obviously, once the global hub is affected, the impact reaches the rest of the member countries in the region. And that has been the case. And Sport for All being a sustainable way to fight and prevent adverse effects of uh, the pandemic has been hard. And we realize that, uh, like my previous colleagues have said, uh, the idleness and sedentary lifestyles have also given us the scare that while we focus on COVID-19, we may be dealing or we may be facing another looming challenge of the rise and spike in the non-communicable diseases because people have been uh, sitting there for quite a long time. For us in Africa, and in particular Southern Africa, the impact of COVID-19 has been on both sport, but also sport's ability to contribute towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, in particular, the participation in organized sport and physical activity has had a direct impact on SDG number three, yeah. and Agenda 2063, yeah. which talk about yeah. healthy lifestyles. We've had impact uh, on the social side of our life in Africa, uh, issues to do with inclusion and equality. This has militated against the Sustainable Development Goals number five, the African Agenda 2063 goal number 17 and 18, which talk about equality and equity and involvement of women and girls uh, and the youth in the social um, uh, economic uh, spheres and ecosystem of our people. We have seen a spike uh, of uh, gender-based violence within the member countries during the lockdown, where people have been living together for longer times, for longer periods. And of course, coupled with the psychological challenge of COVID-19, there's been some very adverse cases of gender violence as a result of uh, COVID-19. We've had challenges on the economic development and employment, which is a gold uh, um, sustainable development goal number eight, and our African Union 2016 uh, Agenda 2063 goal number four and 18, which talk about the contribution that sport must make as well towards economic development and employment. A lot of people have lost their jobs because of COVID-19, particularly in sport. Most sports associations have struggled. And we want to thank our governments in Southern Africa who also stepped in to provide some uh, stimulus uh, response packages to some of our top athletes, sports associations, and, and uh, um, sport uh, uh, umbrella bodies. But there's been a huge challenge as well in sustainable development number 16, goal number 16, and agenda 23, goal number 11 and 12, which talk about governance, and in particular, governance of sport. We have seen the impact of COVID-19 in the area of governance of sport. The distribution of the stimulus um, economic packages has also caused some quite uh, discomfort. Some international federations have also extended some uh, economic uh, or financial support to alleviate the impact of COVID-19. And uh, we, it has exposed uh, quite a lot uh, manipulation, uh, integrity issues, and unethical practices in sport. And this is a lesson that we need to look at. And obviously, as, a, as, a, as Southern Africa, we've realized the need for us to look at the very calculated uh, interventions. So what have been the lessons we've learned? Five lessons we've learned in Southern Africa. Number one, the value of prevention and containment measures using sport and sport for all. In particular, sport for all for us in Africa is not only about athletes, it's about the total human being, everybody, uh, our people at home, the members of the community, uh, school children, the elderly, the young. And there's been a huge need to ensure that we, we prioritize prevention and containment measures where the pandemic is, is escalating. And we have learned this lesson by, by also looking into how Sport for All can be used, uh, number one, to prevent the spike and flatten the curve of infection, but also to enhance containment measures. So we have had, as, as a African Union Sports Council Region 5, measures to ensure that there is still activity going on, but without making sure people gather, without uh, ensuring that they're in groups and in, in um, co uh, uh, cooperation with our governments in the areas of restrictions. There's been a lot of uh, lessons around advocacy and communication, which is the second lesson we've learned as Africa. 
the need for messages to go. Not everyone is connected by, via internet. Connectivity is also very uh, inconsistent. Data is very expensive. So virtual platforms, digital platforms are not exactly reaching everyone else for them to be able to communicate. And that has been a, a, a big challenge uh, in Africa. There's been lessons as well around advice and guidance on staying active in our relations with the World Health Organization, with the Africa Center for Disease Control, with other ministries of health and uh, government COVID-19 national task forces. We have had to ensure that we use, as African Union Sports Council, these institutions to provide advice and guidance, which we then disseminate to our people. There's also been economic support packages and sustenance, which has been a lesson that we've learned that the need for sport and sport for all to provide risk in future, uh, risk uh, safety nets, so that we are able to support uh, uh, economic uh, packages for sustenance of sport for all. And also, like my colleagues have also mentioned, the return to activity and nation building because of the devastation this pandemic has had. There is need and evidence that there will be a lot of damage control that needs to be made. And Sport for All in African Union Sports Council Region 5 uh, has got a big, big role to play in this area. Very quickly, around prevention and containment, we've had to introduce telecommuting, which also makes people work from home. We've had these digital meetings and we've increased home play and games. And this has also helped to sustain Sport for All, even under these circumstances. And we are happy that we've made some movement within the last five to six months. Around advice and guidance, uh, the e-fitness programs that we are running on virtual platforms on our Facebook page every Friday, we have from 6.30 e-fitness, which is galvanizing the entire region to be able to be physically active in aerobics and other activities. We are also in partnership with Tafisa, organizing the World Working Day Challenge, which is coming in October from the 7th and 8th of October. Uh, we are also working very closely within the region. We've also introduced the Work for Life program, which is ensuring that people within their own gardens, within their own homes, home, uh, home states, they are able to work uh, for a minimum of 45 minutes and, and, uh, and be able to be active. We've also had to ensure that there's a lot of consultation and uh, um, ensuring that we, uh, we create guidance around physical activity through a, a lot of our programs. Around advocacy, we have had some number of programs, stay safe campaigns, we have had media campaigns, we have also had uh, some e magazines and e newsletters which we have eliminated around our people. The Morning Doctor program that we run every Wednesday on Facebook page is also providing such kind of uh, education. Around economic support, uh, in partnership with Tafisa, African Union Sports Council Region 5 is proud to have been the first to run an online certified leadership course, uh, which we spread, we had to adapt it. Instead of running it for four or five continuous days, we spread it over five, um, a period of eight weeks, where we had a total of 32 hours um, uh, that uh, we went, went with our members. We just had the first group of 25 uh, finishing their sessions uh, on the 11th of September. And we are very happy that we have not, like uh, my colleague um, from, uh, from Jamaica was saying, we have not given ourselves time to negotiate uh, with, uh, with the, the danger and the, the pandemic that we have had. We have had to continue that we uh, continue to provide support, customize fiscal activity, and also um, engaging with a number of international and continental federations to provide sports specific packages, not only to athletes, but also to communities so that sport for all can benefit. And finally, on the return to activity and nation building, we've had some key lessons and experiences where the provision of sport for all guidelines has been key to a number of our people so that we, we flatten the curve of infection. We do not gather where, where people are not protected. We continue to mess, create messages of, uh, of uh, safe hygiene and wearing of masks, washing of hands with water and soap and all those other elements. And efforts towards reduction in the case of gender-based violence. And we are working with a number of universities, five universities in our region, to conduct a research which is going to look at uh, the, the impact of COVID-19, particularly on the issues with gender uh, uh, equality and, and including gender-based violence, but also the economic impact that COVID-19 has had, so that we can also have the figures that look into it. You may also be aware that the IMF has said that the, globally, the GDP loss is going to be between 0.75 and 1%. And uh, the projected 2021 global growth of 5.4% uh, is said to be projected to lose 6.5% points lower than the projection that had been made for 2020. And the adverse impact has been particularly to the, the acute uh, um, um, uh, poverty hit, hit countries. And that means that the efforts that are being made to ensure that our people lead healthy lifestyles can, can be made. So as Region 5, 
we have learned quite a lot of lessons, but we've realized that there's no need for us to sit and mourn because we need to ensure that people remain active, people remain healthy, people remain vigilant, but also very much aware of their efforts through Sport for All to flatten the curve of infection and ultimately defeat this COVID-19. Our last word as Region 5 is, let us all as a movement aspire to inspire before we all expire. I thank you. Thank you, sir, for your very informative address. Uh, reminding all the attendees, we have sent the link to the feedback form in the chat, bo chat box. Kindly, please do take a look uh, and submit the form to receive the certificate. Now we move on to our final address of the session by Mr. Midhun Lal from the USA, a senior sports analyst. He is also International Cricket Council's certified first and second level coach. On behalf of AIASFA and all the participants, I take this opportunity to extend a very cordial welcome to you, sir. May I now request you to address the gathering. Hello, all. Good day to everyone. I know everyone's in different time zone. So I will start by saying that uh, my name is Midan Lal. I am based in USA, DC metro area. And I've been a cricket coach for over 10 plus years. So I've had decent amount of experience, experience coaching a lot of people over the past years, different age groups. So my topic for today is cricket and associate nations. So I'll briefly talk about cricket and associate nations. So basically, the International Cricket Council has recognized uh, nations as associate nations and full, full, full members. Uh, so associate nations are cricket bodies that are not recognized as full members. So they are a much smaller uh, nation in terms of the sport cricket, so which consists of about 16 senior and 16 junior teams. And so this makes a big difference in, in the amount of funding, funding the infrastructure, the facilities available. So basically, uh, uh, we are also an a associate nation. For example, USA, Canada, Brazil, where cricket is not considered one of the top sports, we fall under the associate nations. So some of the challenges faced in associate nations are, uh, first of all, would be gap in standards between associate and full members. So that means that full members, uh, they are much more competitive. They have a lot more matches played at uh, every level and the exposure and possibilities to be scattered by different major leagues like the Indian Premier League or the, the Pakistan Super League or, or the Big Bash by Australia, it all reduces uh, the infrastructure. First of all, uh, the, the training facilities available, the equipment, the coaching centers, and, and the number of coaches available make it difficult to keep the interest very high. And uh, we have interest is another key, key uh, problem because uh, the, the, the sport is mostly played by expats from cricketing nations and their descendants. So they carry on the sport. So bringing locals or getting locals interested into a new sport that is not mainstream is, is a challenge. And uh, we also do not have a lot of coaches to support. So in this area, I am one, the only one in East Coast at a level two. So I have to train coaches to help me train kids. So that, those are some of the big challenges. So as, as we know, we're going through COVID and it has been uh, an experience altogether. So it, it has definitely hurt uh, the, the nations at, at every level. So for example, like at a large level, at a higher level, it, we have had to postpone the T20 World Cup, which should have taken place uh, October of this year. So that, that costs a lot of revenue for all these cricketing nations. So these associate cricket, cricket boards are mainly supported by allied cricket boards and the ICCs since they do not have much of revenue. And all these revenues are brought by big tournaments. And COVID has also caused many lucrative series to be postponed for associate nations. And uh, these tournaments are very good exposure for a lot of players from all around the globe, regardless of full, full member or associate member because this is where they get scattered for the big leagues. And uh, this will cause associate nations, uh, nations to, to take drastic cost-cutting moves in order to stay afloat because 
most most of these uh, players representing associate nations are also having alternate jobs. So their main focus will not be into sport. So at because of this, we have losses at every level. So it comes down to a regional level where uh, me as a coach is also affected because as, as the lockdown started, as quarantine rules were set in place, I've had to temporarily stop all coaching centers and uh, especially mine, we've had to completely shut down. We cannot have a gathering of more than five to six people and with, with coaching centers having more than 30, 40 students. It is hard to, keep, to, to not follow the, the quarantine rules and uh, with, with schools going online, we have to respect their health, our health. So we've completely shut down and uh, we, as a coach, I can only keep them interested in, in fitness at the moment. They can do multiple uh, activities to stay fit. So we have the goal of reopening so we can bring everyone back in for at the moment, it, the, the main goal is to stay fit. So then again, my role as a coach has not changed. It is to spread awareness about the sport, physical fitness, and the current situation. And uh, to maintain and create the interest amongst these new students, to, to the best of my ability, what I, I can do is create presentations on how to, how to train at, at one's uh, neighborhood or, or make video calls and, and give them tips on training and uh, develop training materials to be carried out outside of, of training camps and keep the players motivated and, and remind them of the benefits of, of uh, fitness altogether. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable address. Now we are moving on to the questionnaire session. We have indeed received uh, some questions from the participants. Some of them are almost similar, so I have uh, collated it to save time. Uh, the first question has been raised by Mr. Saryuno, F-O-R-M-I, from Indonesia. And this question is to Mrs. Maria. What kind of programs in sport development are there in Brazil for marginal society during COVID-19? Hope Mrs. Maria can answer. Yes. Uh, we have a lot of uh, NGOs develop some um, special work related with physical activity, mental health in the favelas, in different parts of uh, Brazil. Uh, in the organiza organization that I work for, we have a partnership uh, with one big favela in the city of Sao Paulo with the name Heliopolis. And uh, we created some special programs using technology, social media, as well as uh, we create uh, podcasts and also we create a radio favela to communicate with, um, with these people and try to give them some advices, but also to promote some practices of uh, physical activity and uh, sports. The one that is allowed to do at this moment, at this pandemic uh, moment. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the second question has been raised by Mr. Ashish from India. Uh, this question is directed to Mr. Midhan Lal. So, uh, Mr. Midhan Lal, in the USA, where you live, do you think that there is equal opportunity for women to participate in sports? Are women's sports items equally promoted by the government? Mr. Midhan could you take this question? Yes, yes. Uh, so I, I do believe there is equal opportunity when it comes to sport. But if you look at specific sports, the, the universities do not recognize it. So if, if we're like taking cricket, for example, the, the recognition is not the same as other sports such as the basketball or, or American football. So in, in terms of cricket, we do not see a lot more participants or equal amounts of participants in terms of males and females. But uh, in general, I would say there is definitely equality in, in sports. Thank you, sir. As we are short of time, we have to conclude our questionnaire session here. 
and now i invite mr sudhir kumar sharma ji the founder general secretary of ai asfa for the evaluation session sir kindly unmute yourself thank you sir thank you ms amla in fact all the speakers were uh, they, there was a consensus about the sports for all in these testing times of covid 19 all of us stressed for physical importance of physical fitness and mental mental health to face this situation and everybody all these most almost all the speakers agreed that sports uh, industry is the hardest hit in these times so Uh, particularly coming uh, the, as as regards dr marthanda pillai's uh, appreciation of sports as integral part of human development it it was very interesting when he observes sports that sports activities are indispensable and they are very important for growth of and development of particularly women and youth and as far as he that I, he gave the example of hong kong and as we are seeing cricket is going on in dubai this ipl of india is being played there and because of the, there are no crowds in empty stadiums so he cited the good example of hong kong showing this cardboard types of public setting in this i mean they, they are fitting, fixing the stadia with that cardboard figures and using robots to create sounds as if the yeah, crowd is cheering that that innovation is going on some other is artificial things are like that are being proposed so that the players feel encouraged so these are is a very that is a innovative idea and is uh, further he, he stressed that tra traveling industry has uh, suffered more because of these sports because of this pandemic so traveling and hospitality hospitality goes together if there are no sports how to travel and how this when total world is at a stand still the lockdown the traveling has suffered the most so and, and another uh, good point he raised yes yes uh with all uh, martin the robots And, and then uh, he emphasized that sports has to go on without if there can't can't be a, I mean we, we, the world cannot go without sport sports have to go on sooner or the later they have to be revived to uh, uh, keep the people engaged and in ensure their physical fitness and better health and our another illustrious speaker mr hoyona isman from indonesia former sports minister he had a very good uh, he uh, summed it up healthy and fit society he in fact a health health comes later fitness comes first if you are fit only then you are healthy it's not other way around so he emphasized the need for healthy and well so, uh, healthy and fit society and he uh, like we in india we are our prime minister announced fit india movement last year he says that they are announcing indonesia's fit to 2020202045 so that uh, in 2045 they will be celebrating 100th anniversary of independence of indonesia so he emphasized the need for that and he highlighted the not only he other speaker sides also highlighted the suffering of industry particularly the sports industry uh, as a in these covid times because it's very difficult to find out the sponsors to money how to pay their salaries these clubs and associations and for staff attached with them it's all they are badly suffering and he was uh, due to this uh, they had uh, they had organized afisa games also in the past and this asian games and para asian games and they are, it was a very uh, i mean delightfully informed that indonesia is going to bid for hosting 2032 olympics and he needed the support of all we wish him our all best uh, wishes for that that indonesia is indonesia is part of india it not part of india it's like india you see ganesha statues all over in, in, in malaysia the biggest statue on a sea side i saw when i was traveling in indonesia we cannot have such thing in india because ours is a secular country every community has to have his idol 
but indonesia being a muslim country and we found so many lord ganesha there so we our best wishes lord ganesha wish you to get this opportunity to host 2032 and we also join our next uh, another speaker dr uh, this Mr. Christopher Samuda from Jamaica Olympic Association. He made a very emphatic speech on this the sports for all. The, and like others, he also emphasized the importance of sports for all. And yes, he spoke of attitude amongst athletes. He spoke of opportunities must be not only he. He says that COVID, like many others, also have said it in different ways. But he was very specific that these are challenging times, and opportunities must be discovered, and we have to create them to overcome this pandemic. And, and he talks of global village. It's a very good concept. Uh, like as, uh, how we in India, we aspire with that of a philosophy: so, world is one. All you may come back. All the uh, population of the world is like brothers. So he emphasized global village rise against a common enemy. Common enemy is quoting COVID, and he emphasized on how to utilize this best time uh, to uh, promote these sporting activities uh, through these webinars and seminars and uh, uh, so the uh, sports as a way of life is the need of our according to him, and it's a very as well established fact that you uh, this use he emphasized use of digital technology. And strategic opportunities in these times, perfectly. This COVID has worked from home or these webinars as we are having. This is this is bringing us together. The traveling is not there. I mean, you can't go to the parks. These clubs are not there. You can't travel. Traveling to a foreign country is ruled out. I when it will start. I I am very I I am optimistic, but I feel normal things may not have. Uh, Uh, normal things may not appear even in 2021 until this medicine comes or everybody has got a shot that he will not get covid so uh, he again emphasized the uh, importance of sports for global village to find solutions to safeguard and unity of it citizens and then sports he says it's a part of social transformation and uh, similarly miss uh, maria uh, from brazil she also emphasized the need for the Uh, yes, Miss Maria uh, from Brazil is, um, is uh, uh, cited the importance of sports and physical activity, and these are the licenses to cure for better health has to be pursued. Is and in consensus is that everybody emphasizes on physical activity, uh, physical activity, physical exercise that keeps so. she also emphasizes the active life to to control uh, these type of a, 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 a pandemics and not only physical health but mental be there if you are mentally better then only you can have a normal life pandemic again she emphasizes given to exploit these conditions to experts from the world can get together and discuss as we are discussing now everybody has to be this opportunity has to be used and everybody gives different ideas which can be a, uh, which can be i mean we can incorporate them in our uh, uh, programs and designs and she uh, may give a very good aesthetics who say according to who 3.2 million die every year due to sedentary lifestyle and we are cursing this corona corona has uh, till now corona has uh, in the world about 10 lakh people 9 point something have passed away and she said 30 32 3.2 2 million people pass every day for street life nobody is discussing that there are so many illnesses depression diabetic heart disease and all that this this uh, but this pandemic has because it has brought lockdowns and all that the world has come to a grinding halt so she says again that we have to uh, mentor at this uh, physical and inactive physical inactivity leads to depression and this has to be prevented for better health and for mental health and sports has to be taken care of both then mr mutoya stanley mutoya ceo from african union sir from zimbabwe gabriel botswana he again emphasized the need for 
sports for all sport in the his central point of his speech was sport for all is indeed a way of life and he this he gave very good examples how it can be utilized and he suggested that in botswana during lockdown there was reduction in crime against uh, reduction in crime against gender based people violence or domestic violence was reduced why i mean they, this ex, this due to lockdown they people were having balanced minds or better at home and uh, lockdown they could not go here and there maybe this has resulted in lesser crimes sport is a way of life is the need of our he emphasized this sports is a very important thing and again like other speakers also said sport is the hardest hit industry now uh, because this but he emphasized the need of use of technology in these times technology this in this lockdown time this internet is a is a boon for the mankind we are having virtual meetings we are having education we are having lessons on the sport and physical activity through these webinars and this capsules on tv program and on youtube and what he, and he again emphasized the need of world work in the children physical activity according to, uh, is definitely boost our immune system and uh, this technology using technology in the, is the best way in these times our next speaker uh, from uh, from uk the uh, mr mike, uh, mike mccurdy hasler he emphasized he emphasized on the traveling he said as traveling has come to a halt we have to life has to be lived differently as in different times normal traveling is has been, uh, is totally a normal air traveling is very minimum other traveling is also not encouraged because of social distancing and not touching each other and we have to cope with this situation he emphasized he had, uh, like dr martha and up and like he also says he sports has to return soon to the life return only then people will be again uh, sports are sports staff sports, sports is suffering maximum Okay, so he sports for all is a challenge these are the challenging times covid has created for that and we new word order is the communication every speaker emphasized two things sports for all and physical activity the use of technology in these difficult times so we had a very interesting talk lastly our brother from mithun la from usa though he was uh, he cited lesser number of coaches and because this cricket is not popular in india it is good that he is taking initiative to introduce cricket in india cricket in usa baseball and this volleyball and american football they are the games popular there but and expect there are many expects in usa from all the cricket playing countries in the world in us so i hope he he will succeed in his mission to create more cricket for men as well as women again he emphasized the need of mental health and mental health comes due to physical fitness and physical uh, better health so we had a very that way we had a very interesting uh, seminar webinar and all these speakers gave very uh, I mean, illuminating and very innovative ideas to improve upon and we must uh, we can improve upon we can uh, discuss this more and in further webinars we are this is our third webinar and our president mr saraf is taking keen interest in that, uh, that he feels every month we should organize a webinar we uh, generally we are organizing it on last saturday of the month this time we have not finalized the date but we are definitely going to have another webinar in october thank you thank you sir thank you amla thank you sir now for delivering the vote of thanks so we have with us sri sarhit singh sekon datu from malaysia he is the president of asiana sports for all association to which aiasfa is affiliated to on behalf of aiasfa and all the participants i extend my warm welcome to you sir now i request you to deliver the vote of thanks kindly unmute sir kindly unmute so you are still on mute just a second sir you are still on mute kindly unmute yourself
Is Lord muted? Yes, sir. Now we can hear you. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mala. And uh, my association with Sports for All started in 1980 uh, when I was appointed as the Director for Sports Promotion by the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Uh, and we were at that time trying to see how we could move sports for all in the country uh, as against NGOs only looking at high performance sports. So that's how I started. And uh, I must say that I'm, I must mention here that I'm the founder member of Tafisa and ASFA. So we go a long way in that line. Now, what makes me happy today is uh, I go a long way in this movement together with Maria Loza. We meet very often and uh, we are very associated with Tafisa. Uh, this is the third uh, pandemic lesson uh, session that we are having, third edition, and I followed all the three, and I feel so proud to know that in times today, when we cannot go out and physically activate, we are on social media and on IT technology. Uh, what what uh, attracted me much today was, we were talking about sports. Someone said sports cannot be a standalone activity. Right? It cannot be a standard like training. It is an integral part of total fiscal education and fiscal activity. And um, someone also mentioned about just being educating through the net doesn't reach the marginal communities or the marginal population. That can only go through the help of NGOs, non government organizations, volunteers. You cannot do it on the net. So this is very good what we are doing now during the pandemic. But after this, I think we have to activate the NGOs in our respective countries. Now, um, I must personally say thank you to all the speakers. I benefited personally a lot. I've taken down your notes. I'm sure I'm going to use them in my own speeches. Professor Dr. Pillay did a very good introduction. The uh, Right Honorable Hayro Isman from Indonesia. Maria Luza, my good friend from Brazil. Mr. Stanley Mutaya, whom I personally met in Tokyo last November. Mike McAdi, UK. I'm trying to recollect where I met you, but I don't know where. I'm sure if I look at my cards, I'll be, I would have written a note there. Thank you very much. And uh, Maru Lal of USA. That is good about cricket, uh, which is a very fast-growing uh, organization. I would also like to end up by personally thanking EIA SFA. It's an all Indian Sports for All Association, particularly the president, Dr. Saraf, who is very enthusiastic in this program and ably supported by the Secretary General, Mr. Sudhir Sharma. Both are my good friends, you know. So they will sometimes scold me and, you know, they tell me off. I just, they're my advisors as well. Um, to you, Chair, Madam Chair Amala, you did a good job. You kept a good time and thank you very much. So let me say goodbye to all of you and we'll meet again sometime, some way, God knows when. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For I would like to special thanks for Mr. Vipin Kumar for his all digital coordination and uh, 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 in helping out making this webinar a success. Yes, sir. Also thanks to Mr. Alok and Mr. S.S. Lal who are with us. I believe they are observers. Why not? Thank you very much. Thank you, sirs. Further, I am proud to acknowledge the presence of Dr. K. P. Ravana Kumar and Dr. K. S. Chandrasekhar, who has been the guide of our president, Mr. A. Sarafji, for his PhD studies on the topic sports management and empirical study on leadership approaches in India. In India. Thank you, sirs, for your valuable presence. Once again, I, Amala Babu Thomas from St. Xavier's College, Mumbai, would like to thank all the office bearers for giving me this wonderful opportunity, especially the President, Mr. A. Sarabji, and the General Secretary of AISFA, Mr. Sharmaji. Thank you, sirs. I further thank the audience for the support extended to this webinar through your active participation. Your certificates of participation will be mailed to your registered email in a week. A quick reminder to all to be eligible for the participation certificate, all are required to submit the feedback form, which is available in the chat box within the next two hours. The next webinar will be held during the month of October. Once again, thank you all, and I declare this meeting adjourned.